In this video, I want to talk about glycogen breakdown. The enzyme involved in glycogen breakdown is glycogen phosphorylase, which we would expect to attach a phosphate, right, because it's a phosphorylase, to glycogen. So the way it breaks down glycogen is it removes a single glucose unit at a time that's connected via an alpha-1,4 linkage, and it removes it from the non-reducing ends uh, of glycogen uh, by adding an inorganic phosphate. So that's where the phosphorylase portion comes in. So this process is called phosphorolysis. So we're going to add a phosphate group to break a bond. So this is opposed to hydrolysis, right? Hydrolysis was the addition of water to a covalent bond to break that bond. In this case, we're adding a phosphate to break the bond. So how does this work? We start off with a glycogen chain that's n residues long, uh, where we have this end here being the reduce or the non-reducing end, and this end over here, assuming this chain goes on further and further and further, has a free OH group at the anomeric carbon. It would, this would be the reducing end. In any case, what ends up happening is glycogen phosphorylase attaches the phosphate, and it actually attaches it right here to, to the one carbon. Um, and so that breaks this bond here. So this phosphate group is attached to this, this glycogen that's N residues long. Glycogen phosphorylase catalyzes this reaction. And we end up getting a glucose 1-phosphate. This phosphate group is attached to this one carbon here. And we get glucose 1-phosphate. And the glycogen chain is now N minus 1 residues long. It's one glucose unit shorter. So um, notice that we didn't invest in ATP to get this reaction to go. So um, this is not a kinase reaction. This is a phosphorylase, right? We're not, we're not getting this phosphate from ATP. We're getting this phosphate just from... from somewhere in the cell. Um, now what happens to this glucose 1-phosphate? We've seen glucose 1-phosphate before and so what ends up happening is that this glucose 1-phosphate will be turned into glucose 6-phosphate via the same enzyme that catalyzed the reverse reaction in glycogen synthesis as far as the overall pathway. This would be catalyzed by phosphoglucomutase. Now once we create this glucose 6-phosphate, so all this thing does is move this phosphate from the 1-carbon to the 6-carbon. And once we have this glucose 6-phosphate, where does that thing go? So this glucose 6-phosphate will go, where have we seen that before? We've seen it in glycolysis. So what it'll do is it'll go to glycolysis and end up you know, going through the, whole, the entire pathway to make ATP. Now why do we know that? Why do we know that that would happen? Well, why, when would we expect glycogen breakdown to occur? Glycogen, if we recall, is a way to store glucose, right? When would we break it down? Well, we'd break it down when we want to free up glucose because we want energy. So when would this enzyme be active? When would we want to break down stored, stored you know, glucose and free it up? Why would we want to free it up? Well, probably because we want to break that glucose down for energy. So when would we want this enzyme to be active? We'd want it to be active in low energy states because what this is going to do is free up a glucose that we can use to break down for some ATP. So that's why we actually have this glucose 1-phosphate converted into the glucose 6-phosphate to go to glycolysis. Now, this is actually particularly energy efficient. And why is that? Well, the reason why is because this G6P allows us to skip the hexokinase step. If you recall, the hexokinase step invested in ATP in this, to, to get this G6P here. In this case, when we break off uh, a glucose from glycogen, we skip that hexokinase step. So we end up, instead of, we end up skipping the first investment phase, or the, the, the first investment step, rather. So what ends up happening is that we end up overall, we still have to invest a, an ATP at the phosphofructokinase step, but then we have the the reactions later to create four ATP so now we net three ATP right because we skipped the first energy investment we skipped the first energy investment so that's kinda cool right as far as a bit more information about glycogen breakdown what, what happens at the at the branch points? Um, there's this enzyme called the debranching enzyme. So in the last video we talked about the branching enzyme. The debranching enzyme has two different activities. One being a transferase. Um, so basically, once we've 
if we're on a particular branch point and we've you know nicked off a bunch of different glucose glucoses, um, once there are four more, a transferase takes three of those last four off of the branch point and then transfers them over to the non-reducing end. So once those three those the three of the of the of the four when they're attached to the non-reducing end, then they can be further um, taken off by glycogen phosphorylase. When there's only one more glucose left on the chain connected via the alpha 1,6 uh, linkage, we have this uh, hydrolase enzyme, and that basically just hydrolyzes that last glucose off of the linkage. So it breaks the alpha 1,6 linkage, and it results in a free glucose. Um, and this glucose is not G6P or G1P, it's just a free glucose. Um, so that's just a bit more in case you were interested. But that's it for glycogen breakdown. Thank you for watching.